Hello and welcome back to The Cocked Ice. We're here again for another perilous tale and this week Butch is taking on the cult of starry wisdom. As you can see the table's set up and I will walk you through it rather rapidly. We've gone for the encircling deployment again. I find this gives probably the most interesting of all the games. Uh, objectives tonight we have... Just completely forgot to this. Uh, we have Destroy the Idol, which we're not having as an idol, we're having as a cache of gear. If you'll read the short story at the beginning of this uh, video, you'll find out why. We have Activate Contraption, which is one, two, three of those. Again, it's not Activate Contraption. In this, uh, it's going to be Disable the Vehicles. Uh, and finally, we have Tell Us What You Know. Uh, so this is one of the new objectives, it requires a hero to do a parlay action against a minion and essentially get a confession marker. Uh, we're playing still with version 3-ish of the beta rules, I've forgotten exactly which version it is now, I didn't check before the game. Um, so they are correct as of today's date. So let's take it away, I'll show you the crews and we'll get on with the game. These are our heroes for tonight's game. We have on the end down here, we have Butch Sullivan as always. He is back with Tough Guy and Crazed. Next to him, we have Jane. She is our brute. Then we have Frankie. She's our demo expert. Then we have Mr. Patterson here, the lighthouse keeper. He's coming with binoculars. And at the end, we have Marcus. And he is our medic as always. Let's go and see who they're facing off against. And here are our villains. This is the Cult of Starry Wisdom. We have in the centre here with the book. He is our cult leader. He's a master pack hunter. Eight wounds, skill five. He's got a couple of interesting abilities. Seize them. So when he's about to make a villainous attack, if there's any cultist within six inches of this model, it takes this action instead. It does a skill check, range 10. If successful, all cultists within 10 immediately move four towards the hero. So he can make the move rather quickly. After that, he's got guards. So when he would make a villainous attack action, if there are any cultists within six inches of this model, it takes this action instead. Uh, range 10, skill check. If this action succeeds, spawn a cultist minion within one inch of the target hero and as close as possible to the villainous board edge. So he can summon extra models and he can make the rest of the cultists move around much quicker. On a two to a five on the, on the objector, on the threat markers, we have cultists, they're minions, pack hunters, four wounds, skill two. So they're fairly meh, uh, but we do expect to get quite a few of them coming around, which is why I've got an extra model. Uh, I might even need to raid the box and find some more. They've got two skills. Uh, number one is safety in numbers. So when this model is spawned, you spawn another one within one inch of it, as close as possible to the villainous board edge. So essentially there's two coming out each time. And they also have Coven of Cowards. If this model has any wounds, it ignores the check step of its behaviour and always acts as a lurker. So the check step, I will remind you, for Pack Hunter, is it checks if there's no other villains within three. Use the lurker, so it skips that. Essentially, it would just always be a lurker once they're wounded. Um, lurkers basically don't do a lot till it gets to threat level of seven. So the tail end of the game. In addition to that, we have three um, other threats. We're just using the basic location for tonight's game. We've got a thousand cuts, we've got unsteady underfoot, and we've got disaster strikes. So nothing particularly new there, and you've seen all those on the channel before. So with that, we shall get the game set up and get moving. And here we are, all ready for the first turn. We've got Butch and Co set up just inside the edge of the board, approaching the vehicles, making the crossing on the river and transporting the equipment. So we're going to start off 
with some of the minor characters. We'll start off with Marcus. He's going to make a fairly simple move forward, just up to here. And he's going to keep his eyes peeled for danger. So Mr. Patson is going to take a skill check and have a look at the nearest marker, which is just down here. He's skill two. Doesn't get any bonus to this, does he? Nope. Let's see if he does it. He gets difficulty three, scores a six, a six, no, that's a nine and a ten. So we'll flip this one over and have a look what it is. That is a number six. So we know that is one of the threats. I think that's a thousand cuts. That's not awful. It is a, I think it's a two. Yes, it's a two AP action, so we can't do much more there. Um, Jane is going to come round the side here. She's going to do a move, move action right over to the edge, just out of shot, running along the side of this hedge. There's a bit of a gap down in the hedge down here. She's going to move around there. Butch is going to make a move action to here. I'll move the lamp around so I can keep going in front of it. Um, Butch is just going to move along to here. Uh, he will go use eyes peeled and then his third action he will order the lighthouse keeper Mr. Patterson to move up as well. And then Frankie is going to make a move and another move action off behind this tree over here and trigger there is a threat marker just over there. So let's zoom out so you can see this. There we go. You can't actually see Frankie now. So we'll flip this threat marker. It is, it's number one. Yet again, spawned the main villain early in the game. So he doesn't have any special deployment rules. So we will simply pop him here for a minute. I'll quickly read through. Master Pack Hunter, wounds eight, skill five. Two skills. Um, bam, 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 one. Pack Hunter doesn't do anything funky. So he will ambush Frankie around here. I'll take that off. Now, Marcus can just about see him. There's a bit of a gap between the, the woods. He is the only one though. I don't think Butch can because the tree is in the way. So Marcus will take a quick shot at him. So he's skill two, plus one dice for shooting, but he's doing it at disadvantage because he is quick firing at it. He gets a four. He needs a minimum of a five for a shooting attack. He scores two successes. So that drops two damage on the cult leader fairly early doors. And that's it for our eyes peeled. That ends our hero's action phase. Hero's phase, hero's action phase. Uh, we'll move on to the villainous turn. I think it's a turn, is it a turn or a phase? I don't know. Who knows? Hero phase, villain phase. Let's do, I'm going to try and call them phases. So we are on with our villain's phase. It is threat level one. So we'll take a threat check. We took away the five, it's a one. Uh, that means it fails automatically, so there are zero successes. That just simply adds one to the threat level and takes us up to threat level two. Next, we do our villainous activations. So the cult leader is a pack hunter. Our check is uh, if there are no villainous models within three of this model, which there aren't, use lurker behavior. Lurker says... If threat level is seven or more, use aggressive. Then action, raise the alarm. Uh, he's not within an inch of an uh, unrevealed threat marker. Then villainous attack. So he makes a villainous attack. He is skill of, he's only skill five. So it's not gonna be the world's greatest attack, but you know, three, four, five. Let's make that against Frankie over there. Uh, he scores a difficulty of five and he gets one, two, three, four, five successes. Woo five successes on Frankie. Let's just pop a dice down here next to her. And then it does, then he does skulk, which is a six inch move towards an unrevealed threat marker. 
and so he'll disappear off heading towards the nearest threat marker which is this one over here so he goes six inches back to there and stops there now that ends his move within one inch of a threat marker up to no good if this model is the first model this round to take an, this action while in range of an unrevealed threat marker increase the threat level by one so that takes us up straight away to threat level three and that is it that is the end of the villain's turn oh, what i did forget to do as well because the master has been revealed uh, so that should actually take us up to threat level of four at the end of the turn going wrong quickly butch as always Let's move that dice we'll give you a slight slightly higher view of the game so back to our heroes you can't quite see frankie but you can see jane down here she hasn't got space to slip past the thousand cuts but she may make a dash for one of these markers at the back yeah which she could probably do so we're going to start with mr patterson in the middle here he's going to spot a threat marker that's just hanging around down here that's skill check he gets difficulty nine and fails that next we'll have frankie she's going to take a shot at the villain the master she gets difficulty two increased to five she causes two more wounds on him that's pretty good can't complain at that so takes him up to four damage and then she's going to make a move action over next to marcus here we'll trigger marcus next he is going to do a first aid action when I find it, um, two action points, skill check, plus one skill. So it's difficulty two and gets one, two, three successes. That's two wounds per success and that heals good old Frankie of all of her damage. So that's all these three done. We've got Butch next and we've got Jane. Jane's going to make a dash for it. No, because she'll reveal that. So I think Butch actually is going to make a... He's going to have to double move around to here. And then he's going to take a shot at our villain and try and polish him off. So we have Butch's skill four, plus one dice for five. And one of those, he gets a difficulty of seven. He scores a ten, a seven and an eight. So that's four more damage. That pops the cult leader up to eight damage check any wounds yet now the cult leader unfortunately for him only has eight wounds so he has been blown off the table already which makes life a little easier for butch and that also reduces the threat level by two Finally, Jane is going to make a dash down the board here, six, uh, eight inches to there, staying outside of six of that one, but triggering this number six here. She's out of range of these centre ones, but triggering the six down here, which is a thousand cuts, and she will take a skill three attack. They got difficulty three. Uh, it scores three successes in total, giving Jane three damage and that's discarded after use okay we're on to next the villainous phase so as the cult leader died we dropped the threat level back down to two so it's a two dice um, test we get a difficulty of seven and no successes again so that just increases the threat level by one to three this is looking relatively positive there are no other enemies on the board a table in the area as yet so we shall trigger or we'll flip back to the hero's turn and we will trigger i've just realized i should have sent her in to come up with the idol because she'll batter it uh in that case we'll trigger um mr patterson and he's going to take a peek at this marker over here he gets difficulty one and scores a tooth so we'll flip this over and that's a four we know that is a cultist 
That's not a bad thing. We can try and deal with the cultists uh, fairly easily, but we do need to do the palais um, and try and get him to tell us what he knows. So Butch is going to make a move followed by a move action around here. He's going to stop just outside of six inches of this number four here, but within an inch of the idol, and he will get to make a single attack action against it. The idol has a minimum difficulty of six. Um, so it's six, he scores a single 10 and that scores two damage on the idol. The crate of illicit gear that the cult is attempted to smuggle across the country. He's been, Marcus can't get out far enough. I think Marcus will, Marcus will come over here for He's going to go ice peeled. He's already moved. Frankie is going to be brave again and she's going to make a dash. She'll make a move, then another move action right up to here. Staying outside of six of that one, but triggering this one here. It is an eight. Oh no. That is disaster strikes. Clearly something was in the undergrowth that didn't like her very much and takes a bit of a bite. This is a skill seven attack. Oh, five, six, seven. Poor Frankie. Oh, lucky for Frankie, it gets a 10. And only a single critical success. So she takes just two points of damage from that. And that gets removed. That's the end of our hero's phase. Onto the villainous phase, and it's a threat check. It's now threat level three. Throw the way. Gets a six and a six. It scores a single success. That is, I've completely forgotten what it's called. Uh, Noose Titans, of course. So everything moves an inch. Um, this is going to move an inch towards Butch. In fact, I should just measure it. it that will trigger there. This one will also move an inch towards Butch. That will also trigger seven. Okay. All the others just move an inch in from the edge of the board towards the centre of the table. So number four we know is a cultist. So we'll pop a cultist there for the moment. Um, uh, number seven, what's number seven? Number seven is unsteady under fourth skill check or knockdown. So it was triggered by Butch. So he's going to take, right, I'll do the cultist first. He ambushes here. I'll do it in order. Makes it a bit easier. So he ambushes first of all. Uh, Marcus will get a shot at him as he approaches. Unfortunately, he approaches far too quickly and Marcus only does a single point of damage on him. There you go. And then Butch must take a skill check or fall down. He passes that with aces. He's steady on his feet tonight. And then we are into the villainous activations. So we've got the cultist. Oh, I've just realized I should, I need to spawn a second cultist, don't I? Um, just go back to the rules. So the cultists, when they spawn, they have safety in numbers. When this model is spawned, spawn another cultist within one inch of it, closest to the board edge. So I'm just drop him down here. And he's as close to the villainous edge of the table as possible. And then we go straight on to the villainous activations. These guys are pack hunters again. So there is another villainous model within three inches. So we'll start with this one closest to the hero's edge. Um, its action is a villainous attack. So off it goes. Now they are only skill two. They're up against Butch who's skill five. He gets a seven, it manages, the first one manages just to knock a wound off Butch, that's not too bad. Um, I should have actually, I should have been doing this at an advantage because, I did the second one at advantage, uh, because there's two of them. Second one attacks Butch, uh, it gets a nine as it's least difficult, it scores a single nine as well, 
So that does knock another point of damage onto Butch. So it takes Butch up to two damage so far. Uh, action, villainous attack, move, move, advance, villainous attack. So yeah, they're going to stay there and be irritating. That ends our villain's t uh, phase. I'll keep going to turn. I'm going to call it phase from now on. Villain's phase. We shall return to our heroes. I think we're going to begin our hero's phase with Butch. He's going to lay into these two cultist thugs who have set it against him because he really needs to get to this box here as quickly this icon uh, icon idol this box as soon as he can so he'll start with the wounded one here now these guys only have four wounds so it shouldn't be too much difficulty and he's running at a disadvantage because he's outnumbered however it doesn't matter if he gets a seven uh, he scores a single success but it is a critical bunks this guy up to three second action he'll attack him again one success is all I need to do this. Uh, he kicks and he gets five. That is nice, nice. He scores a 10 and does another two points of damage to him and removes that cultist from the game. With his third action, he will hit the other cultist. He's now no longer disadvantaged. He gets difficulty eight, however, and completely fails that attack. Slightly irritating. Um, and will cause me problems because he's now not going to be able to hit those and because this has moved forward I now can't get to the idol without taking tests and I don't really want Marcus to take a test. Um, Mr Patterson is going to take a peek right across the board at one of these threat markers. He rolls difficulty six, but scores an eight. So he's going to flip this one right in the corner over here. That's number two. That's another cultist. So Jane could potentially go and deal with that. Frankie is over here and free. She just needs to stay outside of six. I think what Jane's going to do is she's going to move over to here, just staying outside of six. There. She will, second action, will use Eyes Peeled. Mar Marcus is going to stay outside of six of this one. Move across here so he's near her. And use Eyes Peeled as well. And Frankie is going to double move right over here. She's going to disappear off right next to this truck because she can attempt to dis disable that in a minute. That's going to trigger the marker that's just down here. We'll flip that over. That is a number three. That spawns us two more cultists on Frankie. I made a bit of a mistake here. She's off too far out on her own and can't get any support from anyone. I forgot the cultists spawn in twos. So that ends our hero's phase. We're back with our villainous phase. It's now threat level four. And we'll take a threat check. Uh, it gets a seven and no successes again. So that is simply add one to the threat level. No threatening overtures. That was relatively easy. We'll go on to the villainous um, actions. So we have this cultist down here. Now he no longer has a buddy. So he goes, use lurker. Is the threat seven or more? No, it's not. Then he raises the alarm. It's not, I can't do that. Then villainous attack. She's going to make a quick punch at Butch. He gets a difficulty of four and scores no successes there. He then makes a move action six inches towards the nearest unrevealed. That was his marker, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. That was the thing he underfoot. Six inches towards the nearest unrevealed one, which is going to be the only unrevealed one. It's back that way. And he's miles away from it at the moment. That's not a bad thing for Butch, actually, because it frees him up. Next up, we've got a scrap over here, so we'll start with this first cultist. He's going to attempt to bop Paul Frankie over the head. Uh, it rolls a six as its difficulty, scores a six and a seven. 
and does two more damage to Frankie, taking up to four damage so far. Second one is going to attempt to bop her on the head as well. He gets a difficulty of 10. But clearly, he's not very good at smacking people over the head. He's not armed at all. So, no damage to Frankie either. That is the end of the villainous actions. Just clean up the table a bit, move that. Yep, I think that's it. We are back to our hero's phase. So, for our hero's turn, we are first of all going to move Mr. Patterson, the lighthouse keeper, is going to move up four towards Butch. Staying away from the unsteady bit of, it must be boggy ground, perhaps near the river. He's going to take a shot over here at the cultist, who's just escaped. He gets difficulty six and scores a ten, so that does two damage on this cultist here. This board's getting pretty busy. That's his two actions. Jane here. He's, she's going to make a shooting attack at him as well. Oh god, my rolls are terrible today. She gets a nine, scores a single success, taking it was a three damage. She's then going to back off over this way, go and stand next to Marcus. Marcus, of course, our medic. He is going to attempt to heal Jane. He gets difficulty four, scores a five and a seven. That's four damage healed, so that's all off. Butch is going to take a shot at the cultist that's run away. He gets difficulty eight and scores no successes. Oh, come on, Butch. Oh, I could have done with you killing him. Running short on time. He'll do it again. I'm trying to take him out. Uh, gets difficulty five, scores a seven and a ten. That pops his clogs. That's another problem out of the way. And with Butch's last action, he is going to smack the idol a bit. He gets difficulty two and scores one, two, three, four successes on it. That takes it up to, oh no, sorry, difficulty six, isn't it? it takes two successes, so that only takes up to four damage. So Frankie to get herself out of this. It's a bit cheeky, and I suspect Mike might have to tidy this up in the rules later. But she's going to make a skill check. Because she can place dynamite at her feet. She gets difficulty 5, scores a 10 and a, and a 6. And she places a dynamite marker at her feet. Down here. Now she then gets to make a walk action. And I think this is where it should be... Probably clarified she can't make this action in combat, but I'm going to play it by the rules to the letter. She walks four inches away. She obviously chucks them a fizzing stick of dynamite and lets them squabble over what happens. Dynamite then explodes, which is a skill six attack on each of the bad guys. We'll start with the one with the club that you can see. At difficulty two, it gets one, two, three, four, five, six. No minimum difficulty for this. Nope. He is blown sky high. Now the other one that's just down here, which you can't see. Again, all the dice in there. She gets difficulty five, scores one, two, three, four, five damage on him. He gets blown sky high as well. And that's her once again dynamite attack. That ends our hero's phase. We will return to our villains. It is threat level of five. Let's take it away and see what happens. We get a difficulty of three and score one, two, three, four, five. Five successes there. That is... No, it's not. It's difficulty five because there's still five party members left. There's one, two, three. Three successes there. That's crawling chaos. This is horror checks for all of my people. So we'll start with Frankie. She's difficulty seven. She's going to run away. She was four inches back. She's back there. Towards the board edge. Uh, we'll then go on to Mr. Patterson, Lighthouse Keeper. He gets difficulty seven and scores an eight, so he's fine. Marcus, he is fine as well. And Jane, last of all, she fails and then runs back. Four inches. 
So that's all of that. Uh, then we apply uh, the noose tightens. There is only one threat marker left. That's going to move in an inch here. Oh, I'll hand this one because it's not actually revealed. You can't quite see that. So we will return. Oh, and, 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 I keep forgetting things. And finally, we'll increase the threat level to six. We return with our hero's turn. We are going to use Butch first of all. He is going to smack that idol like he's never smacked anything in his life. His first attack, he completely fluffs it. He gets a difficulty of eight and doesn't score any successes. Second attack, we score difficulty of five, increased to six because it's the idol. He scores two more hits on it, takes it up to six damage. Now we need to do two more damage to it now. He gets difficulty four and Butch does it. He gets a seven and another seven. That is eight damage to the kit, the whatever nefarious supplies are being supplied. And that is in our case, this case, the idol. So we have a number of things we can do. I'm going to, first of all, six, six, yep. Yeah. Frankie is going to double move right the way back over here. Try and get to this switch before it's too late. Mr. Patterson is going to edge around this, moving four, eight to about there. I shall pop the tree back on the board. Somewhere, I can't actually remember where it was. It'll do there. Marcus is going to come, six inches of that is there. Marcus is going to come and stop there and give us peeled for eight. And Jane will make a dash for the river and the threat marker over here, which we know is a number two. There we go. She's going to trigger this threat marker here. Number two is another cultist, which of course is a pair of cultists, and they shall both ambush Jane. Now, Marcus or Mr. Patterson, one of them, maybe if Marcus went eyes peeled, so he will make a shooting attack action at one of the cultists. He won't do it if he does that. Uh, he gets a difficulty of eight because it's a disadvantage shot. However, Marcus and his stolen machine gun scores four successes. A cultist has four wounds. So we blow one of these away before it even reaches Jane, which is perfect. So that is the end of our hero's phase. We return with our villain's phase. It is threat level six. Four, five, six dice, two extras. Let's make a roll. And so, oh, 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 oh. so it's a minimum difficulty of five. Gives us one, two, three successes only. Thank you. Oh, got really worried when I saw the pair of ones for the difficulty dice. So we're on crawling chaos again. Which means we've got some horror checks to take. So we'll start with Frankie right over this side. She passes this time with difficulty of five. Butch is of course immune. Mr. Patterson. Oh, he fails. He's off. He's off, he's off, he's off. Let me take this down. Watch his back. He's back here somewhere. Be Marcus next. He's also off. He's just do it with all the parallel. And last of all, Jane, and I could really do with her passing, so she doesn't boogie away. She fails. Of course she fails. I'm going to use my once again re-roll, because I want to keep her over there, because I want to try and chase this cultist down and pummel him for information. That's better. She gets a difficulty of one, scores a nine and a three, so she's not going anywhere. We're good. Then we do the news titans. This moves in one more inch. It's now about there, miles away from everyone. And then finally, we add one to the threat level, taking up to threat level seven. At best, I reckon I've got two turns to do this in, because these dice rolls have been quite lucky so far. We're in for the duel here. The cultist is going to give poor old Jane a quick smack around the head with his little stick. He gets difficulty of three. He scores a three and a five. That plonks two more damage onto Jane there. Now this guy is a pack hunter. 
He moves for being a lurker, he can't raise the alarm, doesn't have a lunatic attack, then he skulks. So he does a runner six inches towards the nearest threat marker, which is over there in the centre of the table. So he runs off into the distance, six inches over to there. Now that's difficult because that puts him right near that threat marker in the middle. I'm going to have to go and trigger that, I think, and just deal with the consequences. So we have some decisions to make. I can only do the contraption by getting all three of them. If I run at him, then that triggers. And I'm close to the unsteady underfoot, which I can't move from. So Jane's going to go first. This turn, she's going to move four inches over to here and staying six inches outside of that, but she's within an inch of the contraption. So she is ready for the switch. She'll then go and eyes peeled. Frankie's going to do the same, sticking outside of six inches, moving to within an inch of the marker. Marcus will move at four. His eyes peeled. Stay six inches out here. Let's see how they go slightly wider. Mr. Patterson will also move four. Butch is pretty confident he can keep his footing here, so he's going to move six, four inches straight forwards. He's going to take a skill check for the unsteady underfoot. Yeah, he's perfectly steady. That ends his move. No, he doesn't. He's just outside of six, so he's going to make another move action. He's going to run straight up to here, up to the van. He's going to go, haha. He's going to do eyes peeled first, and then he's going to move to the van, to here. He's going to take another unsteady underfoot check. His difficulty one again, and just smashes these tech checks. It's not a big problem at all. So he does trigger this here. That's number five. That is our last cultist. We spawn one cultist here. We spawn another cultist within an inch of him. And all hell breaks loose. So we're going to start with Frankie over here because she can see past friendly models. So a three dice shooting attack. She gets a difficulty of 10 and therefore fails it completely. We'll then trigger Marcus here. He's going to take some shots. He gets difficulty 10 and fluffs it. Then we have Mr. Patterson. He gets difficulty 6 and scores a single success on the nearest one. So that's going to take one damage. There. We'll use Jane here, who should have been able to see. Yeah, she can see kind of the edge. Mm, actually, no, she can't see through that one. So she can't, she can't see. And then we've got Butch finally. So he's going to shoot the already wounded one with a lot of dice and we get difficulty of four, increase to five for shooting, one, two, three, four damage. So you blast that one straight away. That's okay. We are good. Good, good, good. There are no threat markers left, which puts us in an awesome position. We're over to the villainous turn. It is threat level of seven. Let's go for it. One threat check. We get difficulty of five, that's fine, so that many party members left. We have six successes there. It's from the shadows. Each master is removes three wounds, no masters. Select like the hero with the fewest friendly moles within three inches. That's gonna be um, Jane, or, or it could be Jane Butch or uh, Frankie. So uh, one to three, it's Jane, four, five, six, it's Butch, seven, eight, nine, it's Frankie. Five, that's Butch. Oh dear, Butch. And we spawn a, where do we spawn it? Spawn me within one inch and as close to the board edge as possible. Bang, that just comes back again. Let's have a different one. Okay, then apply the Crawling Chaos. There is no Crawling Chaos to do. Then do, oh sorry, no, there is Crawling Chaos to do. There's no news Titans to. So, for, uh, horror checks, um, Jane. She fails. He's four inches back over here. He's back over the river. I've got Marcus and Mr. Patterson. Marcus fails. Mr. Patterson fails. Oh, come on, lads. And lasses. Four inches back. Goes back to there. We've got Butch is immune. And Frankie finally. Uh, she... Uh, 
it also fails. Oh, that's just not fair. Not fair in the slightest. She's just back at the side of the river as well. So Frankie runs away to over there. Okay. Uh, then we do these Titans. There isn't a new Titans. And then we increase the threat level to eight. That has put me in a bit of a quandary. We've got the villainous actions next. So the first um, cultist is going to attack Butch. He's going to attack Butch with the advantage. And he's skilled two. Uh, he gets four and he gets a nine and a six. That's two more damage to Butch. Six to four. Uh, the next one, I'll do the one that's also attacking Butch because it's a bit easier to use a pack onto the... That's fine. Uh, this one attacks again. He's skill four, but that's still two more damage on him. Blunk, blunk. And then finally, the last one is the unengaged one. Uh, there is villains in three inches of this model. It does a villainous attack. It can't do a villainous attack. It does a move action. So it comes round and surrounds Butch down here. I don't think it then does its fallback, does it? I think that's it. Okay, that's all the villainous actions done. We are back to our heroes. And this looks like a bit of a quandary to get out of this. Right, I'm gonna set myself up just in case this all goes well. So Jane is gonna move. No, I can't set myself up because I need to be able to do all the things. I must do Butch first. So whilst being beaten on by three cultists, Butch is going to attempt to parlay with one of them, smacking him in the face repeatedly, yelling, tell us what you know, in that kind of violent offender type action. Now he can do it whilst engaged because obviously he's got to be within an inch. It doesn't say he can, can't do it when he's engaged with three of them. So let's do it. So it's a skill check. We've got a difficulty of four. We have two successes there. I'm just going to check the parlay action. Skill check, range one inch, minimum difficulty equal to target skill, which is two. That's done. That's one parlay action. During this game, parlay actions have a minimum difficulty equal to the target starting wounds. Four. Okay, that's fine. I've still got two successes. I've got a confession token. I ain't got any confession tokens. We'll have a little repair token here. So we've got one confession. I think what Butch is going to do next is he is going to attempt to escape from combat. He needs three successes. He gets difficulty nine, scores three tens. He leaps out of engagement range on top of the truck somewhere that's with the outside an inch of all of them. And you know what he's going to do now? He's going to flick the switch. Skill check. Let's just check what the minimum difficulty is. Um... Interact with the switch. If all three are successfully interacted with to activate the contraption during the same round, score three points. Let's do that. So he gets a difficulty of five and scores three, four successes. So this switch has been flicked. Jane, she's going to dash back over here. She's going to take a skill check to flick the switch. If this works now, near miracle. Difficulty five, she scores a 10. She flicks this switch as well. Now Frankie was only ran away four inches and I suspect I've moved slightly too far. So she's gonna move back to within an inch of this switch. She's gonna flick the switch. Come on, Frankie. Come on, Frankie. She's difficulty three, she scores a nine and six. She flicks the switch as well. It's all three triggered in one turn. We score activate the contraption. At the end of the game, superb work. Now we do in three, increase the threat level by one to nine, but that is okay. Finally, we've got Mr. Patterson and Marcus. They're both within 10 of these cultists. So we'll start with Marcus. He's gonna shoot at this cultist here. It's difficulty nine scores a single success. He'll shoot again. It's difficulty one, scores three, four successes. That kills this cultist. Mr. Patterson is in range of the next one. He's in range of both of them actually, so we'll take away and just shoot and then shoot again. 
Difficulty 10, he's not hitting anything there. Can we take this last, last one out? No. Mr. Patterson shoots wide with both shots. That ends our hero's turn. We're on to the villain's turn and it is now threat level nine. Three, six, nine. It's a lot of dice. Off we go there then. So we have, oh my Lord. Uh, six, difficulty of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes there for the villains. The trap has most definitely been sprung. There are no unrevealed threat markers. Each minion removes one wound. There's no wounded minions on the table. Then we do from the shadows, we spawn another minion. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, it spawns over here. Then we do crawling chaos. It does not matter now though. So Jane doesn't care a jot, but doesn't care a jot. Frankie doesn't care a jot. Marcus doesn't care. Mr. Patterson does care, runs off. Uh, he's going to have to go four inches and hit the hedge. And we'll move around the hedge later. Everyone else realises the day is won and we're not in a bad position here at all. Uh, then we apply uh, News Titans, can't do that. Then we apply Increase the Threat Level, that takes the Threat Level to 10. Next, Minions. So we'll start with this one over here. He makes an advance action to Butch, because there's a friendly Minion within Inch. This one that makes, he's probably with, no, he must be outside an Inch, because I said Butch was moving to outside. So he's also going to make a move action to Butch. This one's just going to clobber Jane. It gets difficulty one, increased to two, so he scores two more attacks on Jane. She's still alive at the end of the game. That is not a problem. That, dear friends, that ends the villain's turn. The threat level is now 10, and that triggers our end of game condition. And I'm feeling pretty confident with this. Far more confident than some of my other games. Let's score some victory points. So our leader is alive at the end of the game. That is one point. We didn't lose a single teammate. We came close, but we didn't lose one. That's another point taking us up to two. We scored one, tell us what you know. That takes us to three. We destroyed the idol, that is six. Sorry, that is three, takes us up to six. Uh, we activated the contraption. That scores us three points again. That takes us up to seven, eight, nine. So our final rank for this week's game is a tale fit for telling. And there we have it. But Sullivan and Co. save the day once again. As always here at Cock Dice, we are eternally grateful for watching our games, liking, subscribing, and generally filling our channel full of joy and happiness. Please comment below, do all the usual stuff. We'll see you again in a week's time for another perilous tale. Good night. <laughs>